friends, welcome to another episode of the new video podcast series of RC Cyprus titled Meet the Royal Commonwealth Society and the Commonwealth. In this episode, we're discussing about the relations of the Commonwealth with the Republic of Cyprus with the former and very well experienced ambassador, Mr. Vribidis Evribiadis. Mr. Evribiadis is the former High Commissioner of Cyprus to the UK. He also chaired the Board of Governors of the Commonwealth Secretariat, having previously chaired the Executive Committee. Before assuming his post as a High Commissioner to the, to the UK, he was Deputy Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. He served as Ambassador to the Permanent Representative to the Council of Europe. He also served to the United States and non-resident High Commissioner to Canada. Earlier in his career, he held positions at Cypriot embassies in Germany, Russia, and Libya. He also held the position of First Secretary at the Permanent Mission of Cyprus to the United Nations. Dear Mr. Viviadi, it's a great honor for us to have you, and thank you for your contribution to the RCS Cyprus video podcast series. Thank you too, Marinos, and please call me by my first name, which is Euripides. I like to be called by that. Uh, and, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk about hashtag our Commonwealth present, uh, past, present, and future. And, and, uh, and before I receive any of your questions, let me upright and upfront congratulate you congratulate the Royal Commonwealth Society, the Cyprus branch, its president, Achilleas Emilianidis, for, for, for the establishment of, 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 the, of the branch, because it was something missing. And it was uh, long overdue. And uh, I just, just before coming and speaking to you, I went through your Twitter handle, and I was impressed uh, uh, what, what you're doing. So keep up the good work, and please take it to the next level. Thank you very much. Uh, we truly believe that uh, you are a real friend of the Royal Commonwealth Society of Cyprus and thank you all for your support um, all the previous um, uh, period. So, uh, dear Mr. Viviadi, the, the entry of Cyprus as a Commonwealth member in March 1961, I believe that marked a turning point in the history of the organization. Um, with a population at that time of less than a million, Cyprus was the first small state to join uh, to the Commonwealth. Uh, in addition, another interesting is, is the fact that Cyprus was also the first member to achieve independence and join to the Commonwealth as a republic. So my first question is, what were the incentives for the Republic of Cyprus to participate in the Commonwealth at that particular time? Well, listen, it, it's interesting that you begin with that, because uh, uh, the, the Commonwealth itself developed over the years. It wasn't established with a big bang. It is not a treaty-based organization. I mean, People didn't come together to say, now we're establishing the Commonwealth, here is the treaty. Uh, uh, so uh, it, it developed over the years. And indeed, it's not exaggeration to say that 1961, when Cyprus joined, it was, it was a debate. It was a debate within Cyprus itself uh, when we received our independence in 1960. After all, we did have an armed struggle against the British. Okay, uh, uh, and as, as indeed many country, countries that are current members of the, of the Commonwealth did. Uh, so there was a debate internally. Should we join the Commonwealth? What would be the added value? Uh, what are with the advantages? What are the disadvantages? Now, the reverse was also true. Uh, the, the United Kingdom at the time and the Commonwealth uh, at the time saying, well, now we are really widen the horizon now. We're going to be bringing in a, sm a small island state, and, and a small island state is defined any country that it is less than 1.5 million. Uh, uh, we're going to be bringing it in. It's going to be at the same table as with us. It will have equal, uh, equal voice, as it were. Uh, um, so what would be the added value for us? Okay, so there was a double debate. There was a double debate, one within Cyprus and one within the Commonwealth itself. Uh, and of course, historically, uh, so that was, that was a, a watershed. It was a, 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 a moment of decision in the development of, of uh, the Commonwealth. Um, and in, in, from the Cyprus vantage point, from the Cyprus perspective, uh, the president of the Republic at the time realized first that it had to do damage limitation because it was an arms struggle against the United Kingdom. Uh, damage limitation by joining by, by joining, applying and joining, not to mention, of course, uh, uh, the fact that uh, uh, to this very same day, uh, one third of our tourism, for instance, comes from the United Kingdom. So there were dependencies, there, were, there was trade, uh, there were politics, and of course, uh, Cyprus being a nascent republic, uh, 
uh, a small country trying to find its place in the sun in the international stage. And it's not easy for small countries uh, to, to find their niche and to find a place. So it was truly an additional platform for Cyprus to, to, uh, to join. So, uh, so irrespective of the fact that there was a debate in the end, of course, uh, Cyprus did apply by and large about the reasons that I just mentioned. They're general and simplistic. They're a lot more synthetic than that, but basically that was the, the main thing. Now, on, on behalf of the United Kingdom, if you like, but it wasn't just United Kingdom, Canada, uh, um, the, uh, the, uh, it was India, it was, uh, you know, the modern Commonwealth. We always have to distinguish the British Commonwealth as well as the modern Commonwealth. The modern Commonwealth gets established in 1949 with the London Declaration two years after Pakistan and India received their independence. So we have to distinguish the two and, and like I said, see that it developed. It's a, it's a continuum. Um, so from that, from the perspective of the, of the Commonwealth, we're saying, well, we have to move on. We cannot be relics of the past, as it were. We have to move on. We have to move forward. And Cyprus does have, of course, a, a, a British uh, tradition. Uh, we were part of the British Empire. Uh, we drive on the right side of the road, which happens to be the left side of the road. <laughs> we do <laughs> so, so many commonalities. Of course, uh, um, so uh, it, it developed and Cyprus established a precedent with other small countries to come in the, in, in the, um, uh, in the Commonwealth. Suffice it to say out of the 54 uh, sovereign countries, states that are currently in the Commonwealth, uh, 32 or so, if I'm not mistaken, are, 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 are small uh, states, small island developing states. So for Cyprus, it, it, it was another step towards finding its rightful place on the international stage. Uh, and and, and uh, that, you know, it all started bit by bit. So by and large, I hope I'm not, I'm answering your question, <laughs> uh, hitting the nail on the head, but uh, that, that's what comes readily to my mind. Thank you very much. Uh, my next question is about uh, the, the Commonwealth and Cyprus relation uh, throughout the decades. So how this relation developed throughout the decades, and um, I'm referring to political relations, trade and economic relations, or cultural relations. Well, listen, it's, it actually, it's a good question. And, and as far as I know, there has not been a book about it. Uh, there has not been, uh, uh, at least I haven't read anything, but perhaps I'm missing something or I haven't read uh, a thesis or, uh, you know, or, or, or a paper on it. But those, uh, those relations also developed. Uh, I mean, I remember, uh, you know, receiving scholarships. I mean, mm -hmm. educating our people, it's, it's very, very important. Education is very, very important for, 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 for any country, for any people. And, and, I, and uh, the, the, the relationship started with, with trade, education, cultural exchange, don't forget the whole network of, mm -hmm. of, of the Commonwealth. Currently, there are something like more than 80, <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken, 80 plus accredited organizations, citizens diplomacy, and, and there's a huge network, network about universities, which you know, uh, which you, you're the University of Nicosia is, is, is uh, um, uh, associated with. So it was trade, it was culture, it was the platform, it was the, the platform, a political platform too, if you like, even though we don't really talk about politics uh, uh, with the, um, in the Commonwealth, uh, it's a soft power organization. Uh, but all these things uh, were, were coming together, sitting at the same table with the United Kingdom, Canada, New Zealand, India, Pakistan, uh, and of course, currently with all St. Kitts and Nevis, uh, Papua New Guinea, and, and it gives you, uh, uh, um, uh, it gives you uh, uh, another platform. On also, I mean, I would be remiss if I were not also were to mention, of course, the Cyprus question uh, right mm -hmm. after 1974. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, the Commonwealth has taken a principal stand on the independence and the territorial integrity of Cyprus and the implementation of the United Nations resolutions on the Cyprus question. And that's hugely important uh, for us as well. I mean, when you have uh, um, uh, right now, let's say 54 countries that are in theory at least subscribe 
to to the communicate to the paragraph and 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 I think I can I can read out the paragraph but you can easily dig it out uh, uh, um, that's important because you know it is the international system works by different layers and different steps so if you have a position taken at the Commonwealth level on the Cyprus question, let's say, uh, uh, the implementations of the United Nations resolutions currently on the uh, uh, right of the Cyprus to explore and exploit its own exclusive economic zone. And the seas are fundamentally important. You know, like I said, most of us are island developing uh, countries and we know what it means to be small. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, the Commonwealth gives you that platform as well, which theoretically can translate itself uh, if there is a course at the United Nations. And of course, we did have many courses at the United Nations uh, in 74. And, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, when you ask for assistance, when you ask for, uh, for help based on reciprocity, based on different things, this is another aspect which you can bring forth. When I go to my colleagues uh, 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 on the Cyprus question or uh, something like election in the in the Council of the International Maritime Organization, okay, IMO, which also uh, is headquartered uh, headquartered in London. Uh, you know there is already an affinity. It's already an affinity. So Cyprus, for instance, gets re-elected to the Council of the International Maritime Organization, number three in its category. Okay, good showing. I have no doubt based also from the solid support where, that we had from Commonwealth uh, brothers and sisters. And that's not to be underestimated at all because there's a lot of criticism about what the Commonwealth uh, out there uh, and some of it justified, some of it not. Uh, so uh, this has been my experience uh, 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 at least for the last six years in, the, in London. I would like to comment on that. Uh, we have some voices that argue that the Commonwealth is an, organ is an organization with no substantial influence in the international scene. How do you comment on that? Well, listen, it is a soft power organization. It is not treaty based. It is, it's an amorphous because it takes all five uh, continents. You know, uh, the, the ge geographical region, uh, uh, religion, cultures. You can imagine if you go to to, to a room, uh, uh, to a place where you have 54 different agendas. What is the common dictionary? What is the common denominator? How do you come together to give it to in uh, one voice? Uh, uh, so th that is a, a huge challenge. Now, of course, it, it is uh, things obviously develop. Nothing, the ancients used to tell us uh, uh, nothing, uh, everything is in a state of flux. Nothing remains the same. Now we have new challenges. We have uh, COVID-19, which has altered the way diplomacy is being conducted. Now, you are in a room with 54 uh, countries, sovereign states. Each one has their own agenda. How do you bring that together? So it's, uh, despite that, we do have communique. I mean, communique uh, comes out with issues dealing with women, uh, youth uh, uh, empowerment, women empowerment, climate, uh, oceans, uh, three quarters of our world uh, are oceans. Uh, and oceans are also a source of, 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 uh, of livelihood, uh, employment, uh, nutrition, you name it. A lot of things come together with ocean, is the, is the lungs of the planet. Uh, despite that, th there are common denominators and then uh, uh, the Secretary General would take the, 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 the platform uh, during the Paris uh, climate conference saying, this is what 54 countries think. Uh, and of course, these 54 countries can also do, the, do their own input as well. It is not a, a hard power organization. Now, and, and, and let's be frank, and I know this is a soundbite, and, and it sounds uh, 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 like a, um, a buzzword, but you know, the, the Commonwealth is as powerful as its member states allow it to be, just as much like the United Nations. It's, a, it's as powerful as its uh, uh, member states allow it to be. We see the paralysis in the Security Council. We see the dysfunctionality between, uh, uh, between members in the Security Council. Uh, well, take that at the lower level, at the Commonwealth level, and then you have the same thing. So one cannot expect the Commonwealth, uh, uh, we should not, let's put it this way, we should not make 
the Commonwealth something bigger than what it is. It is what it is, no more, no less. And, 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 and in the case of Cyprus, if I can do that now for us, it is important, but I remember it to be a lot more important before we joined the European Union. Small countries have infinite needs, but finite res financial resources, finite human resources, finite uh, 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 gravitas, let's put it that way. So you have to prioritize. And right now for Cyprus, the biggest priority, of course, is, is, is you know, the Cyprus question, but also the European Union. We are not monothematic. And Commonwealth is part of that greater mix. Uh, but it, it could be, I believe, uh, more, uh, more uh, impact oriented. It needs to find its niche. It doesn't have a big budget, the Marinos. I mean, the budget right now is something like, I think less than 35 million, 32, 33. So the core budget, is not that big. Uh, um, uh, uh, it's small by by any standards. Okay, how much can you do? Uh, but also the CFTC, the, the, uh, the Commonwealth Fund for Technical uh, Cooperation, uh, um, that, that also has taken a hit in, in the last year. So um, I I think it is high time that we do some internal uh, seeking. Uh, but at the same time, not to be a talking shop. I mean, it's good to be a talking shop. It's good to let things uh, uh, um, uh, out of your chest. It's important, but it has to be action oriented. It has to be result oriented. Th these things have to ha have to have a meaning and down to the uh, down to the Commonwealth citizen. Taking into consideration your comment, your previous comment that uh, the Commonwealth can be used as a platform. Uh, for, for the Republic of Cyprus to promote uh, its interest. Um, what are the other opportunities exist for the Republic of Cyprus? And at the same time, uh, which are the challenges or the limitations? Well, the limitations is, uh, if I can start from the end of your, que of your second question, uh, the limitations are inherent, in inherent in terms, of, in terms of where you give the emphasis and, and what your priorities are in foreign policy. The needs, like I said, are infinite. What is finite are resources and, 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 and uh, uh, financial, uh, financial and human resources. I mean, in, in a place like London, uh, uh, for instance, uh, where you have, um, you know, uh, the bilateral agenda and the bilateral agenda in and of itself is huge. You know, you have to promote uh, the holistic interest of the state not just the Cyprus question, or not just, uh, of course, the situation uh, overall. I mean, you have uh, uh, trade, you have culture, you have uh, 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 many things happening in London. So how much time can you devote to the Commonwealth? Okay, how much time can you devote, devote to the International Maritime Organization? So very often we find ourselves, uh, um, if I will ever write a book about Cyprus diplomacy, I have the title in my head, but I don't know if I will ever put the pen on paper in such a way. Uh, I would say from sometimes from the microwave to the deep freeze. You have an issue which comes on your table, you have to deal with it. And then somehow that issue goes down to the deep freeze because other issues come. And there is so much happening in diplomacy. Now, what more can we do? I believe we can do more with the uh, uh, intercommonwealth trade. Uh, I think there can be more issues in terms of in terms of uh, of, of preference. I think the, the United Kingdom should uh, uh, um, and uh, other of the bigger member states, uh, um, including of course India, uh, um, Canada, New Zealand, Australia. Um, I think we we can we can make a difference in terms of uh, make, giving it uh, making more trade, but also. Uh, uh, um, in, 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 in network, it's a huge, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a huge network, whether it is uh, the academics, whether it is universities, whether it is pharmaceuticals, there is, there is a lot that can come out of it more than what we do. But again, at the same time, uh, uh, small countries uh, have to give their priorities uh, depending on the exigencies of the time. Taking the fact that the UK... If I'm answering your question, if I'm not yes. answering, you hit me back because your job is to nail me. <laughs> now, taking the fact that 
the UK basically is out of the European Union. Do you believe that this fact will boost the, the Commonwealth network? Well, listen, anything that boosts the Commonwealth network, anything that brings it more vividly on, on the radar, I welcome it. But if the Commonwealth is going to be seen uh, and it's going to be perceived, and it is, if you like, another instrument of hashtag Global Britain, or those that may argue that the Commonwealth uh, uh, should be, should, uh, will substitute the European Union, I think that's fundamentally wrong. I think, you know, if the Commonwealth is seen as an instrument of UK policy, I think it would fail. It is no, it is no longer, as we said, the British, uh, the British Commonwealth. It is the modern Commonwealth. Countries, it's a voluntary association. Countries can leave, countries can come in. And then it's not all United Kingdom. I mean, you have a country like, uh, like uh, Mozambique, uh, which, is, which did not have any historical links with the United Kingdom. You have Rwanda, which mm -hmm. could the next CHOCOM, Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, is going to be the next chair of the Commonwealth. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, it was, you know, they were going to have the CHOCOM in, in June. And now because of COVID, they will do it sometime next year. But the chairmanship will go to Africa and it will go to Rwanda, which does not have historical links with the, with the Commonwealth. So uh, it, it's interesting how the Commonwealth itself, as, you know, going back to the first question, came about and is still maintained after so many years. It's, uh, 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 so uh, um, I, I, I think more, more can be done. We have to know what the niche is and... and, and mm -hmm. I have some ideas in my head, but obviously you have, you know, uh, one will have to consult the countries and, and find uh, uh, the, the common denominator because everyone has a, has a different agenda, uh, Marinos. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Mr. Briviari, it's a more general question and taking advantage of your vast experience uh, in, in the diplomatic field, uh, I'd like to briefly mention the challenges of a diplomat of a small state. Yeah. Well, I think Orwell reminds us in Animal Farm that all, animal, all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. I think, I think the animal that was referring to was the pig. All pigs are equal, but some pigs are more equal than others. <laughs> I don't mean to make a pun that, you know, uh, perhaps it's not diplomatic on my part. At, at any rate, obviously, size matters. Obviously. Uh, uh, at the same time, I think what matters much more in the international system, despite the challenges that we have on our liberal international system, and, and, and uh, what matters more is the idea. We should ha not have a small head and a small brain. Big brain. Big ideas that are, of course, not just theoretical, but they are, uh, they are tangible. I'm often fond, and if you don't mind me saying so, I hope the time is allowed, uh, I, I often use Arvid Parto. Arvid Parto was the ambassador of Malta in the mid-60s, early 70s at the United Nations. He's the one that coined the, the world, uh, coined the phrase that uh, the, the oceans are the common heritage of mankind. The oceans are the common heritage of mankind. Eight words. Eight words that revolutionized how the international community looks at the oceans. And, and lo and behold, after uh, Seabed Committee, after Third United Nations Confer Conference on the Law of the Sea, we have the Third United Nations Conference on the Law of the Sea signed, uh, the, uh, the, the signed in, in, in 1982. And from where small countries like our own, uh, of course, want uh, uh, the implementation of the law and partially and effectively administered in order to guarantee their rights. A small country like Malta, but a big idea. The seas are the common heritage of mankind. And from there came so many things. So my idea, yes, small is small, but we are in a system where there is equality. I will burn in hell if I would ever I never did, whether it was the Council of Europe that I served as permanent representative or in the Council or in the Commonwealth or in other organizations, in other conferences, I would burn in hell if I would have ever allowed, as it were, 
uh, uh, to, to have uh, an inferiority complex about being small. I know what I am. I know that we are small. I'm not, I don't purport to be France or Germany or the United States or, 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 or anybody else. At the same time, we have a place under the sun. We, 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 have, we have to contribute and we do contribute to the wider agenda. We, have, we do have a national issue. I wish it wasn't there, but it is. So that has to be addressed. We, do, we live not exactly in the neighborhood of angels. I mean, it's a tough neighborhood and we see what's happening and I do not want to start talk about the politics, uh, politics of it, but we have the rule of law. We have the international system that guarantees, that, that, that guarantees the existence of the small states because everything else, Marinos, has been tried and failed miserably. You know, and what, what worries me now is that the liberal, international liberal system is coming apart of the Sims. And, and, and this is, the, the language that is being used is not parliamentarian language. And the way we talk has a lot to do with the way we think. So uh, the fact we have to really treasure and adhere to the rule of law, to the charter of the United Nations, to the charter of the Commonwealth, because the Commonwealth also has a charter, and, and really contribute to the wider agenda for the common good because, uh, uh, you know, as Martin Luther King Jr. said, we, we may have come from different boats in this planet, but we are all in the same boat. It's a global village. There is huge interdependence. Space is shrinking, time is shrinking. You see, you know, one virus begins in one part of the world and it's affecting all of us. And, 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 and we have had the lockdown with COVID-19. I think the challenges, uh, the challenges are there, but we have to keep our eye on the, on the ball uh, um, uh, because the alternatives are really scary. Yeah, Mr. Viviadis, our episode is moving to an end. Uh, so I would like to ask you about your final comments uh, or maybe a message that you, that you want to share uh, well, with our audience. The Commonwealth is, is an organization that is underestimated. Uh, I think it re uh, I, many people don't really uh, know about it. Um, sometimes they will, they will wrongly confuse it as... as uh, vestiges of colonialism. Of course, there is a historical connection, but you know, a country like India would not stay in a club that it is considered a vestige of colonialism. And I think it, it, is, a force, it is a force for good on the, on the world stage. I think more can happen. Uh, so I, I want to, again, conclude with what I started uh, in congratulating the Royal Commonwealth Society, the Cyprus branch for what you're doing, slowly, slowly, every bit uh, counts. And, and I think, uh, uh, you know, sometimes I joke and I say that the Commonwealth, the world was never common, you know, uh, but of course that's not where the word Commonwealth comes from. Uh, but at the same time, I, I say that countries like our own give it more, give it another platform in which you come and you, uh, and you uh, and you talk, share experiences, uh, and and of course uh, move forward on issues that hopefully are of, of direct relevance um, uh, uh, to uh, to to the citizen. It is underestimated. It is not well known. I we can understand. Life goes on, of obviously, with so many other issues. But at the same time, the bottom line that it is a force for good in the international arena. So those are my closing remarks. More than happy to join you again to take things uh, uh, at the more detailed way, uh, Marinos. And again, congratulations. All the best to you and all the best to, to the people that happen to be listening to us uh, right now or in the future.